about. And, and this project was led by my dear friend and colleague, Kimberly Kelly, who is now uh, the Washington bureau chief of the LA Times. But we wanted to look at the systems and structures of policing, right? That again, none of the things we are interested in were finding particularly bad anecdotes or places. We covered plenty of those. But it was how do we look at policing as an institution and cover it in a way that's bigger than just like, well, that guy's bad, or he did this thing, right? And one thing the police officers were saying, and the, the chiefs were saying very often, is they would say very often uh, two things. They would say, well, sure, like every profession we have bad apples. Yes, there are bad police officers, just like there are bad journalists, they would say. Right? And, and I pointed this out once on the stage with uh, the Detroit police chief at the time. But what that response does is it appropriates a turn of phrase. Um, but the rest of the turn of phrase is it talks about how one bad apple can spoil the, the bunch. Right? The point of this is to say that if you have one bad apple, it ruins everything. Right? Um, <laughs> which I don't think he appreciated at the time, <laughs> right? Um, but, but, but we said, all right, journalistically, and I was hearing this in some of the conversations I was having, Kim Brielle heard this in some of the conversations she was having and her reporting. We said, all right, what if we take that at face value? Even the police chiefs say there are bad police officers out there who are doing things that, that are bad that don't work. So what happens to those officers? Where do they go? What, you know, like what, what, what's going on? So we launched this project called Fired Rehired. This was another project where we created data that did not exist, right? There is no national database of police officers who have been fired, right? Again, policing is 18,000 departments that all kind of operate as their own fiefdoms. And so what we did is we took, if I remember correctly, the 50 or maybe the 55 largest police departments in the United States of America with the most people. And we went after a decade uh, it was either five years or a decade, of every officer who had been fired. Who are they? What are the internal affairs report? We want everything. This took forever. We were fighting with all of these individual departments. In some departments, they would give us names of people. In other departments, they would, the names would be redacted. In some departments, they would give us this. In other departments, they would give us that. And But what we found over and over and over again was that police officers who had been fired by their police departments, now think about that for a second. These are police officers who the police say are so bad they should not be police officers, right? There are very few gray area cases here. It's extremely self-selecting. Those officers um, in their labor contracts, and rightfully so, have an, have an ability to appeal an arbitration. And so what we want to look at is how often do police officers who are fired by the police successfully get their jobs back? And what we ultimately found was that if a fired police officer appeals or goes to arbitration, 60% of those officers get their jobs back. Right? So even of the bad apple police officers by the police own standard, half of them remain police officers even after being fired. And this is remain police officers at the department where they work. This isn't even the officers who get fired and go somewhere else. And so what we found as we looked at this, again, was this, this sense of how do we look at all the potential reasons and how do we look at this about structures and systems? Even in this case, a piece that was about officers who had been alleged to have done some really bad things. The stories were still about the system and the structure itself. Because these people are kind of just individual pawns within a bigger institution and structure. And we found a lot of things. We, um, first of all, we found a, <laughs> one of our big conclusions was the reason that a lot of these officers get their jobs back is because the police are remarkably bad at HR. That, that, that objectively, in many of these cases, these officers had not received due process. They had both probably done the thing they were fired for and also were objectively treated unfairly. And so when a third party person came in to review the appeal, they would go, well, you're right, he shouldn't have done that thing, but also you took seven years to fire him for it. That's not how this works. And so, we would, so that was a, a big portion of it. 
And that was interesting. It was a way into a conversation that was different. We talked to police chiefs who would talk about how, well, yeah, this is a major problem. That in some departments, we purposely put our worst officers in internal affairs, which means the investigations are bad. Why? Because we don't want some of those officers on the streets. Um, we would, or we stat, or the unions are successful at getting their guys in internal affairs. And so then that becomes the investigation upon it, which everything else is based, right? You have cases where the union contracts, which govern policing and, and police discipline, where over the years the unions have been able to put things in. There are police union contracts that say every two years, anything that might be embarrassing has to be cut out of an officer's personnel file. There are a lot of ways that departments play with progressive discipline, which is a concept in HR world where it means that you can't fire you for your first offense, right? You gotta get a warning and then you gotta get a, right? There has to be some level of progress um, in the, or progressiveness in the, in the discipline. And, and so we had a case of an officer who had been caught. He would arrest someone and then he would pull over somewhere let them out the back seat, take the handcuffs off, and go, fight me for your freedom. If you kick my ass, I'll let you go. He had gotten fired for this once, appealed and got his job back. Then the district attorney found a new video of him doing this. He got fired again, and the reason he got his job back the second time is they said, well, when you fired him the second time, you referred to the first firing, but because, that, because he successfully appealed that, you can't even include that in the conversation. Um, and so we start piecing all these things together. 